the locomotor appendages of animals are highly innervated by the sensory system. This allows these locomotor appendages to also act as sensors that are constantly informing us of our environment, which is often complex. One of these senses is proprioception. Proprioception is the conscious and unconscious ability of an animal to sense one's own movement and position of body elements in space. The locomotor appendages of animals are extremely morphologically and behaviorally diverse among species. And even when we get a look at a given locomotor appendage, for instance, the, the pectoral fins of fish, we see considerable morphological and mechanical variation. Recently it's been shown that the pectoral fin rays of, of, of fish are capable of sensing movement, rate of movement, and position. And they're also acting as mechanosensors in addition to their role as propulsors. However, this is raising questions. It's raising questions of how the sensory system is evolving with the biomechanical system. The pectoral fins of fish provide a system in which to address this question in because they're homologous to each other. They come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and mechanical properties, all of which will affect the magnitude of bending and curvature that occurs as these fins are moving through their fluid to propel an animal through its environment. And, these, and uh, the diversity of pectoral fins allows us to study how sensation is relating to mechanics it provides a window in how the sensory and motor components of a neuromechanical system are evolving together. In this study, I focus on the wrasses, which are a hot spot for diversity. Here we have a uh, 420 species phylogeny. And if you're more interested on this phylogeny, check out Mark Weston's talk on June 30th. In addition to having a well-resolved phylogeny, the wrasses are extremely diverse in, in their fin morphology, fin mechanics, and swimming behavior. Rasses are labiform swimmers, which mean they use their pectoral fins primarily to drive locomotion. And within the rasses, there's a continuum of swimming behavior that ranges from rowing on one side to flapping on the other side. Here we have Palicaris vivitatus, which is using its broad paddle-like fins, moving them in an anterior or posterior direction to perform drag-based locomotion. And it appears that these rowers have relatively flexible fins, which is apparent from the large degree of curvature and bending that occurs throughout their fin stroke. On the opposite side of this spectrum, we have flappers, which use their high aspect wing-like uh, pectoral fins, moving them in a dorsal ventral direction to form lift-based locomotion, more like a bird. And it appears that the pectoral fins of flappers are relatively stiff compared to those of rowers, which is apparent by the minimal degree of curvature and bending we see in their pectoral fins. However, it's unknown whether these differences in bending are driving the associated sensory system to, in, to evolve increased sensitivity. Based on anatomical and behavioral observations, I hypothesize that the flappers employ stiffer pectoral fin rays in comparison to these rowers, and that the sensory system of these stiffer fins has evolved increased sensitivity due to that reduced um, degree of bending and curvature that occurs throughout uh, their fin stroke. To test these hypotheses, first it was important to determine closely related species pairs and the phylogenetic relationships within the wrasses among these rowers and flappers. Next, I'll compare the mechanical properties of fins used for rowing versus flapping. And finally, I'll compare the sensory response to fin ray bending between stiff and relatively flexible pectoral fins. Using an unpublished tree expanded from West Neal uh, Farrow 2005, I performed a parsimony-based ancestral state reconstruction of swimming behavior. I previously mentioned that swimming behavior was a continuous trait. However, I bend it into three discrete categories, rowing, intermediate, and flapping, for more uh, ease of presentation. And you'll see that it takes, um, it took 35 steps to explain the extant character states uh, present of the extant uh, taxon and phylogeny. And 13 of those steps represent independent and convergent evolution of this flapping swimming behavior. And based on this ancestral state reconstruction, I was able to identify four different species pairs where each species pair is within the same subfamily, where one of those species is a rowing species that, that uh, performs the ancestral rowing <coughs> swimming behavior, and the other species has independently evolved that flapping swimming behavior, which will really allow me to phylogenetically ground these comparisons uh, between the rowers and flappers across the entire phylogeny. And now that I've established these species pairs, I'm going to go over the experiments I, I conducted in one of these species pairs and then go over the uh, results.
results of, of all four at the end. Um, so the first thing I did was compare the spatial distribution of pectoral fin ray stiffness between the rowers and the flappers. Here we have one of those species, Paris gumbusus varius on the left, and Halicarius bibitatus on the right. And what I did was conduct a three-point bending test uh, at three different points along the length of each fin ray. And I standardized each measurement by first determining fin ray length, and then performing the, the, the three-point bending test at a distance of 20% fin ray length. Um, and in both species, I found similar trends. What I found was the pectoral fin ray stiffness decreases as you move from the leading edge, which is highlighted in red, to the trailing edge in both of these species. How, uh, and also pectoral fin ray stiffness um, decreases as you move from the proximal to the distal part of each fin ray. But when we compare between species, what you'll notice is there's an order of magnitude difference in the flexural stiffness. In the flapper gonfosis varius, we see that it, it is indeed an order of magnitude stiffer than within the rower Halicaris pivotatus. So now that I've established the species, I've established that they are indeed differences within these flexural stiffness between these two species. The next step was to compare the hypothesis that the sensory system of these stiffer fins is more sensitive than those in the more flexible fins. To do this, I performed extracellular electrophysiology. I connected a glass electrode to one of those sensory nerves that innervate the pectoral fin. I connected a linear actuator to one of the individual pectoral fin rays and recorded the response when the fin rays were being moved. So the linear actuator was programmed for a series of step and hold stimuli where it raised the pectoral fin, held it in a bent position, and then lowered it back down. And I conducted this uh, I gave randomized series of stimuli to different, uh, to different fins, and there were four individuals per species. Um, and there were a few general trends of, of sensation that we found from the pectoral fins in, in every species we examined. Those trends are that as you move the pectoral fin, there's a burst of activity that occurs at the onset and offset when the pectoral fin is moving. And also you see activity occurring as the pectoral fin is being held in that bent position. Another general trend we found is that activity increases as you increase bending amplitude. Blue represents the smallest bending amplitude, red represents the largest, and you can see that that burst of activity associated with the movement, as well as the sustained activity associated when the fin is being held in its bent position, are both increasing as we increase bending amplitude. But when we compare between species, on the right we have this, this flexible fin from Halicaris bifitatus, and on the left we have um, the gonfosis, uh, the, uh, the stiff fin. What I want you to point out is, what I want you to see is that it takes a four times larger bending magnitude to elicit a response in these flexible fins in comparison to these stiff fins of gonfosis varies. And that's occurring not just on the onset of this activity, but also the sustained activity as well. It takes extreme bending amplitudes to elicit these responses in these flexible fins. And while the results from that first species pair are suggesting that the sensory physiology can be tuned to pectoral fin mechanics, in order to look at this more broadly, again, it's necessary to use these phylogenetically grounded comparisons and, and, and look for broader trends across this phylogeny. Um, so summarizing these four species pairs, first let's look at the x-axis, uh, where I have flexural stiffness. And in all four species pairs, you'll see where the red is representing the flapper and the blue is representing the rower, the flapper always employs stiffer pectoral fin rays than does the rower. Now, I'm going to combine all of that data into one figure. Again, the x-axis is flexural stiffness, and on the y-axis is the minimum bending amplitude needed to elicit a response. And you'll see across all four of these species pairs, it takes three to six times the bending amplitude to elicit a response in these flexible fin rowers in comparison to these stiff fin flappers. And this is suggesting that the sensory system sensitivity is correlating with pectoral fin mechanics more broadly uh, across this group of fish. So in conclusion, the pectoral fins of fish do not act just as motors. They're also acting as sensors. And the sensory system of stiffer fins is more sensitive than that of more flexible fins. And finally, since we're seeing multiple examples of the sensory system becoming evolutionarily tuned 
two locomotor appendage mechanics. And this is occurring in independently evolving groups, whereas the fin has evolved to increase stiffness, the sensory system has evolved to increase sensitivity. Um, what a, what a, I, what a uh, excuse me. This is really becoming more of a general principle of how the sensory and motor components of a neuromechanical system are co-evolving. And I, I hope that this is allowing us to start thinking of these systems in, in a different way. Because this isn't just going to apply to the, the fins of fish, but also the wings of birds, the wings of bats, and um, should be looked at a little bit differently. And just to look at what's going to happen in the future, uh, here's a much larger ancestral state reconstruction. Uh, 318 species, and you can see three major independent evolutions of these, 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 this high aspect ratio, flapping fins, and but you also will see speckled throughout this on the right, uh, multiple other evolutions of these high aspect wing-like fins, and this is really going to allow us to look at this uh, extremely broad across the races and, and get a better understanding um, for these trends um, within this group. And uh, with that, I'd like to acknowledge everybody from the Hale and Westmeat Lab, all my other colleagues. There's a, uh, another plug for Mark's talk. And thank you all for being an awesome audience. I'd be happy to take any questions.